Hello, everybody, and welcome to Keeping It Young podcast, conversations about marriage, family, and ministry life. I'm Dave. And I'm Beth Lee. And we are the Youngs. Hey, thanks for joining us today. And uh, this is a special edition of yes, the Keeping It, it Young. Yes, Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day, indeed. This is uh, unusual that we get to be right on Valentine's That's Day. That's true. Yeah. So this it's is awesome. exciting. And uh, we have enjoyed so much uh, this past study we've been doing on loving him well. So yes. we're interrupting that just a little bit. Right. We have at least one more yes, and episode then, to do on that one. Mm-hmm. And then we have a surprise, mm. uh, a surprise episode that uh, we'll be telling you about next week. That has something to do with loving him well. Yes, it does. And so it's going to be exciting. We can't wait for that. And uh, But today's a special edition of the Keeping It Young, and we're going to be devoting the entire thing today to Valentine's Day. Yes. And to our competition. So before we do that, though, let's just take a moment and remind you that uh, you can always reach out to us at the Keeping It Young Podcast dot com. Please do. Uh, we'd mm-hmm. love to hear from you. So it's always an encouragement. We receive quite a few texts and emails and even voice messages from the podcast yes. uh, website. So join us there. And also a reminder, uh, I got a note the other day from uh, our website host at for the uh, Couples Prayer Advance coming up in October. Mm-hmm. And uh, Better Together is what we're calling that one. And awesome. also the Keeping It Young meet and greet. So um, it's already starting to have a lot of signups. Good. So we're very excited about that. That is exciting. So if you haven't uh, thought that through yet, check the mm-hmm. calendar and come join us. We would love to have you in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. It's October 13, 14, 15. Yes. And uh, if you can't join us on the 13th, you can come 14 and 15. And the 13th is just an, an addition. It's an extra bonus uh, a bonus day. <laughs> bonus so, is always good. I we, like bonus. It's like when you go through the drive through at Chick-fil-A and you order the chicken nuggets and instead of eight, you get 10. You get 10. Or wow. you get the, the bonus nugget, the nine nugget. I love that. That's, That's like, so this is even better than a bonus <laughs> nugget. <laughs> well, that was quite random. Love. <laughs> oh, well, see, food is one of my love languages. Absolutely so. it is. A bonus come for a bonus chicken nugget. No, no, the- a bonus <laughs> session. <laughs> a bonus chicken nugget. That is awesome. Oh, dear. But uh, we'd love to have you. And uh, <laughs> I, listen, uh, check out our website, too, at uh, evangelistdaveyoung.com because we have quite a few other couples retreats coming up here in the springtime That's as well. That's true, right? We have one and, coming uh, very shortly. Very shortly. We're up in Columbus, Columbus, Ohio this weekend. And then next weekend, we're with our friends at Castle View Baptist in Castle Rock, Colorado. Yes. And then we, let's see, coming up here very shortly as well, we have one in Ohio near the Dayton area. Yes. Uh, actually, our, our host church is near the Dayton area, but we're meeting in Westchester, Ohio for that mm-hmm. event. Yes. And uh, you'll find that information on my website, or if you can't find that, reach out to me. I'll send it to you. Yes. But uh, we also have a couples retreat coming up at Southland Christian Camp. And there's two there. You have two options there. It's uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And that's coming up in April. So they get a bonus session too. They do as well. So <laughs> Better than Chick-fil-A nuggets. <laughs> yes, it is. So we'd love to have you join us for any one of those. Please think about that. Check it out. Come see us. If you have any questions, Absolutely. let us know. Absolutely. We would love to see you. Okay. Are you ready to jump into the... I am. The Valentine's episode. This is it. And it's our Valentine's Day giveaway 2022. Mm. And uh, today at the end, we're going to be announcing five winners and a bonus. <laughs> a bonus winner. We're all about bonus today. Better, better <laughs> than the Chick Fil A bonus nugget. <laughs> that is awesome. Okay, so uh, let's just uh, let's just talk a little bit about Valentine's Day. It's mm. always been one of our favorite times uh, in our marriage. Well, if- it comes right um, near David's birthday, so Absolutely. we just celebrate. We'll celebrate this whole weekend. We are recording on the weekend, and David's birthday is on the weekend, and then of course Valentine's Day is Monday, and so we just get to celebrate all weekend long, and it's awesome. Yes, and I our love it. Son has a birthday next week yes, as well, so yes. it's quite a quite a quite a week, and we're looking forward to all of that. And just uh, things, you know, one of the things we notice as we read through all of your entries, uh, we got some poetry, we got a comic strip. That um, was really cool. That there's it, it no way was. to show you that on yeah, the podcast, but, I wish all but of you that could was see that. really cool. Yes, and then we got a comic strip, and then we got some photos. Yes, uh, just uh, mm-hmm. it was really a unique thing, and we enjoyed reading all of them and looking them over. And just to kind of get us started here, mm-hmm. uh, one of the things that uh, we noticed is that as we were reading through all of these, we were reminded that marriage is made up of hard times and good times and fun times. Yes, and all three of those go together. They do, don't they? Yes. And uh, several of you wrote to us about the hard times and how that, uh, what helped you get through the hard time was, of course, uh, our God mm-hmm. and prayer. 
Yes. But uh, the strength of a spouse and a family was amazing. Yes, the support of you a know. spouse. Was, Absolutely. That was um, reiterated, I think, over and over again in yeah. all of the entries that we in, had. In every, it was interesting that, that many of you that wrote in, in every situation where you uh, went through very difficult times, you wrote to praise God for your spouse. Yes. And uh, what a reminder, because life has valleys yes, and tragedies does. and trials mm-hmm. and challenges, mm-hmm. and uh, we have each other in our marriage. And uh, so marriage is made up of the hard times, the good times, the fun times. And and these uh, entries reminded us to serve each other loyally, mm-hmm. even in the dark times, even in the troublesome times, even in the struggling times, we right. keep serving each other. Right. And uh, the valleys, uh, the valleys eventually turn to mountains and, and there's valleys yet ahead for all of us. Yes. But if we stay faithful in these valleys and the challenges and trials, then uh, it's one of those things, you know, we're in Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 61, where Isaiah is writing about the Messiah that's coming. And he said that the Messiah is able to be, will, will be coming, mm-hmm. you know, to preach the gospel to the poor and, and, and to set the captive free and all right. of that. Yes. But he also uh-huh. says he'll be bringing beauty out of ashes. Mm. The dark times of our life when it seems like everything's falling apart. Right. And there's nothing left. And what are we going to do? Mm. Uh, our God has a way of bringing beauty out of those ashes. And right. apparently one of the ways he does it is through our spouses, through our marriage. Yes. And uh, that's a beautiful thing. And it is a, it's an amazing thing to be able to look back at those hard times, whether they were relational, whether you were just mm-hmm. sticking together because you needed to stick together and you knew it was the right thing to do, or whether it was just something outside of the relationship that was causing that burdensome, troublesome time, you I know, at least from our experiences, that you look back and you and you know how much the Lord grew you through that time, how much the Lord carried you through that time, and how much your relationship grew during that time. So you can look back and even thank God that you were able to go through that time and become stronger as that a is, couple. That is so true. And, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, as I was even thinking about both of our parents and, and you know, ch- times of challenges for them mm-hmm. and your mom and dad as they yes. were coming towards the end of their life mm-hmm. and uh, the loyalty they had for each other and, and, and how they stayed sweet and close even in the valleys and the challenges. Absolutely. And uh, what mm-hmm. a beautiful thing that is. These also reminded us, your entries also reminded us that it's important to laugh together continually. Yes, yes. Some and, of them uh, were very funny and lots of fun to read. Yeah. So and, uh, and and one of the other things that I thought was interesting was that several times the things you mentioned that were funny, uh, I, in, in a sense, it was unique to you. Yes. And, uh-huh. uh, you know, it's one of those like, you know, almost you had to be there. Not, <laughs> not sure what happened there, but you had to but be there. But we're really glad that it made you laugh yes. out loud. And, yes. And uh, that was awesome. And then, then here's a big one. And this one uh, is simply this, just a, a quick lesson we learned from your entries. Uh, building memories takes time. Mm. And also makes life wonderful. Yes, it building does. memories together. Mm-hmm. Yes, and uh, we'll mention one here in just a moment. Uh, one of you wrote in, and one of our listeners was telling us uh, about a memory that happened in the first few years of their marriage. Right, and and it's been a long time ago, but mm-hmm. it was something that was really made an impression on them. What a memory they had! Absolutely. And uh, this past week, we were in a family conference in uh, Georgia. And uh, the pastor had talked to me several times just about, you know, raising children. He has five. And mm-hmm. and uh, one of the things that, that you know, I, I was able to talk with him about was the importance of making memories. Mm. And, uh, and and it doesn't have to be a lot of money. You know, one of the big memories that our children have, say, of your dad, is when he would do family devotions with the kids. True. When we were at your mom and dad's home. And right. Then, uh, our kids remember a lot of our family devotions. Because mm-hmm. sometimes it was a time where somebody said something funny, and it was all downhill from there into one massive, hilarious <laughs> episode of trying to learn the Word of God. And, and yet yes, the and memories, where were we? <laughs> yes. The memories are what makes all of that so worthwhile. So uh, in your marriage, keep building memories together. Take yes. today and do something that will help you build a memory. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that uh, we've, I know you've heard us tell this before on our podcast, even I think maybe last Valentine's Day, one of the biggest memories we have of a Valentine's was the year that we didn't have the money to go out and we didn't have the money to buy anything. <laughs> right. But we took the time to make a meal at home and pulled out the fine china and got all dressed up and had spaghetti together. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> we had a cheap meal. It was a good memory. It was. And we built that memory. And so uh, what a day, uh, Valentine's Day, a time to build memories. And it you know, is. Valentine's Day is also a memory, just, just, it's about love. The fact that it we is. love and that love is fun and marriage is special. And so kissing 
Oh, yes. Kissing is awesome. Listen Kissing to these stats. Build some Bethley, memories. <laughs> Bethley found these, and I thought these were just great. I actually, I follow a lady who uh, works for the Revive Our Hearts podcast, which is one of my favorite podcasts to listen to. You've probably heard me refer to it. And her name is Dana Goresh, and I follow her on Instagram. And she posted just a couple of days ago about kissing. And so these are some of the stats that she posted. Um, the first one, a kiss can cause our blood vessels to dilate and our pupils grow wide, which is likely one reason that so many of us are apt to close our eyes <laughs> while kissing. Do you, do you close your eyes when I kiss you? I do. I do. It's because I make your blood vessels dilate. <laughs> it, it could be. It also could be the older we get, the closer you get, the blurrier you get. So it's just easier yeah, to close Sometimes my these eyes. days my wife pushes me away, y'all. <laughs> So she can see me. <laughs> well, we we can kiss, and then I want to be able to talk to him. But if he's still nose to nose, he's all blurry. She can't see so. me. It's, it's a it's a good it's a good thing to have at our age. <laughs> no, no, you look good. <laughs> all right, the next one is kissing for a minute can burn up to twenty six calories. Wow! So to burn a hundred calories, that's like four minutes. Okay. And uh, so we could work on this. We could there come we up go. with a mathematical kissing weight So when loss we program. go on our date tonight, we can look, because usually restaurants will list how many calories mm-hmm, the dessert mm-hmm. has in it. So we can decide how many minutes of kissing we need to do in this, order to burn that many calories. This has great potential. <laughs> I'm so glad you follow this lady. Oh, this is funny. Okay. Kissing may add a few years to a man's life. One study claimed that men who kiss their wives every morning before leaving for work live five years longer than those who don't. And you know what I'm thinking? What's that? Kiss me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> It'll help me live longer. <laughs> there we go. And more kissing. There we go. The average person spends two weeks of their life kissing. Two weeks. Mm. Let's make it a couple of months. Hey, okay. <laughs> let's, let's do that. Kissing causes a chemical reaction in your brain, including a burst of the hormone oxytocin. It's often referred to as the love hormone because it stirs up feelings of affection and attachment. I would like to say right now that if you're feeling kind of detached from your spouse, maybe you should think how long has it been since I kissed them because it does. Yeah foster affection and attachment. You know, where was it? We read somewhere along the way, there was a challenge. Was it one of the couples retreats we were at and someone spoke and said, um, you should at least do one 15 second kiss every day of your marriage. Oh, I think I read it. We read it on a blog and then you presented it at a couple. Oh, that's right. That's right. We mm-hmm. got it from a blog and, mm-hmm. and we preached about, I preached about that and taught about it, but uh, maybe that's a good place to start. 15 seconds. Isn't that long? And uh, who knows what might happen. (laughs) (laughs) It'll make it a nice Valentine's Day. Um, Here's another one. Roughly 10% of humans don't kiss at all. How many? 10%. Oh, that's really sad. That is really sad. Mm. Well, maybe they never get married. Mm -hmm. But, you know. Oh, well. Okay. So here's another one. You know that high you feel when you're head over heels for a new love? That's the effect of dopamine in your brain. Dopamine is released when you do something that feels good, like kissing this and other happy hormones make you feel giddy and euphoric Mm. (laughs) i think we should have a nice giddy day tonight (laughs) euphoric date some of your friends that live here in the area you may have to bail us out if she gets carried away (laughs) oh i don't think it'll get that carried away uh 66 percent of women said that they have ended a budding relationship because of a bad kiss Mm. (laughs) Oh, wow. That might be a, a something we'd like to hear from our um, listeners. How many of you ended a relationship before you got to the marriage altar? Because, uh uh-uh, uh, nope. Can't My guess kiss. is that these were not, you know, strict <laughs> fundamental Baptists because you <laughs> didn't kiss till you got to the altar. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Let's see here. One kiss can contain 80 million new bacteria. And kissing often can change your microbiome. Mm. So our microbiomes are the same. And then finally, the Bible encourages Christians to greet each other with a holy kiss. <laughs> and I like that one. <laughs> yes. The, the Bible is pro-kissing. Greet each other with a holy <laughs> it kiss. It is. Read the book of Song of Solomon. Absolutely. All right. Well, you ready to jump into some of these? I am. And, well, uh, now I got to pull this back up. We so actually, you just keep uh, we didn't have um, uh, as many as maybe we thought we would, but uh, we had quite a few. And here's one from Tom Keller for his wife, Sarah. Mm. And he basically just said that he is blessed with a wonderful wife who consistently puts the needs of her husband and family ahead of her own. And he talks about how that since he first met in college, 
uh, many years ago, they had been in, just in love. Mm -hmm. And he said that he was accused of being attracted more to her physically than anything else. But they fast forward <laughs> 20 years mm -hmm. and he's grown closer and closer. She's become his best friend for many reasons, more than just the physical. And he said this in the last year or so, he lost a job and uh, the job loss actually kind of damaged her reputation. But he felt like his life was crumbling and falling apart. But Sarah stood by his side supported me, he said, when many of my so-called friends were nowhere to be found. She loved me when I struggled to love myself, encouraged me to get back on my feet, find a new job, which God has blessed me with. And she showed me what unconditional love really meant. I'm uh -huh. so thankful for the wife that God blessed me with all those years ago and continues to bless me with each and every day. And he says, happy Valentine's Day, Sarah, because I know you listen to the podcast too. And he ends with, I love there you. There you go. That's, that's so uh, sweet. That's very good, Tom. Yes. And then we got one from uh, uh, Valentina Boven. I think I'm saying that right. She, yes. Uh, I met uh, the Bovens at Crossroads Baptist with uh, my friend, Pastor Nathan Brown. And she just really mentioned uh, they had just celebrated their 40th wedding anniversary back in December. Their kids threw them an amazing surprise party. And one of the things she said that she um, she loved her husband was that even in the first few years of her marriage, he was always serving her. And, and she remembers that he really, apparently at great sacrifice, bought her a piano, a grand piano. Mm. And uh, she even sent us a picture of it. And it yes, is a beautiful it is, piano. It's a beauty. <laughs> and she still has it. And she said that she loves her husband because of his constant walk with the Lord and his steadfastness. He's the best dad and grandpa to seven grands. And she says there's nothing he can't fix. And he is our kid's house handyman. Aww. And uh, so uh, way to go there, Mr. Boven. You are the man. And uh, then uh, here's Logan Stearns. And if I look this up right, uh, Logan attended uh, West Coast Baptist College. And uh, so maybe our children would know <laughs> Maybe no, Logan. our children know Logan. And she's married to Ernie. So mm -hmm. uh, read through that one for me there, love. She says, marriage isn't easy, but being married to Ernie sure is. When I first met him, I knew he was talented. It seemed he knew how to do almost everything. Being married has only confirmed this. If he doesn't know how to do something, he'll quickly learn, like how to French braid my hair. And he, she sends emojis with it, which are just adorable. And I, I think it's adorable that he can French braid her hair. I'm, I'm a little impressed myself. He never stops learning and studying, especially the Bible. I absolutely love the security that this provides to our marriage. He speaks the truth to my heart often. He's the perfect balance of wisdom and humor, although I will never tell him that I actually enjoy his random dad jokes. <laughs> I get that, Logan. <laughs> he is so quick to forgive, is incredibly patient, and cares for all those around him. His servant's heart has inspired me many times. Ernie points me to Jesus constantly through his words, but also his everyday life. And all of this is what makes my husband the best. Hey, way to go. Now, here is a, here's a special one for us. <laughs> this is from a young lady named Bethany Young, who is actually married to our son, Josh. Yes. And this uh, was the first entry that we received. She did. And she said, the best thing about my husband, I mean, he's a young, so enough said. <laughs> and she put... Absolutely. She put a little laughing emoji there. And then she said, I don't want to participate in the giveaway, but I just wanted to write about Josh. He's my calm and steady. He lives out the words, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. He's one of the most patient people I've ever met. He's my best friend, my favorite person to spend time with. I am so thankful for his similarities and differences to me. I admire how hard he works pouring into his church and how he loves Jesus. I adore the way he smiles when he gets home. He loves me more than I ever thought possible. That is so, so sweet. So, Bethany, you made our day with that one. Yes, you did. And, and way uh, to go, Josh. You the man. That's my son. <laughs> yes. And then here's a Mary Jane. Is this Mueller? I would say Mueller or Mueller. Okay. All right. Go ahead mm -hmm. and, and uh, read this one for us. There is nothing like being loved unconditionally every day. Every moment, there is nothing like being treasured, valued, prioritized, desired. That is life with my lover, my best friend, my soulmate, my man. His growing walk with Jesus that drew me to Joe at the beginning is the same walk with Jesus that draws me to him now 10 years later. His voice brings reassurance during trials and a thrill any other time. Oh, that's quite a line right there. Yes, it a is. A thrill any other time. <laughs> his gaze always has that special twinkle reserved only for me. His touch is irresistible. His smile smile contagious. He brings sunshine to my day. He's my favorite evangelist. I am always blessed by his preaching. He's the most amazing, patient, tender father because he is the most amazing husband. Our children admire their awesome, fun-loving dad. Joe is our hero. 
And then she adds a PS at the end here. I and, do love the and, postscript. <laughs> she said, after our first two children, Brother Young, uh, referring to me, I guess, she said, Brother Young gave Joe and me incredible words of wisdom and quote, the world has a lot of ugly people, so you guys have cute children. You might as well have a lot of them, end of quote. And so she said, we have seven adorably cute children in almost 10 years of marriage. <laughs> that is wonderful. So uh, congratulations, y'all, and happy that I encouraged you to have a big family. Yes. I love that. Uh, here is uh, D.L. Grice, mm -hmm. and he says, David Bethel, you've asked the impossible. I can't only write a paragraph or two on what I love most about my wife, but I will do my best to keep it short. And he mentions that the past few weeks have been difficult. His dad passed away unexpectedly at the young age of 55. Mm. And it's not been an easy process. They've had a relatively healthy family. Uh, he said, both sets of my grandparents are still living and my dad has a grandfather still alive. I told my wife how much I love and appreciated her during this difficult time, but I'm sure I've not done enough. So here's my chance. He says, I love her for putting Christ first, for her enthusiasm to serve the Lord, for her willingness to teach and show our kids the love that God has shown us for being her. Yes, even when she makes us late. <laughs> I identify <laughs> with that. <laughs> for her hard work in the home and in her professional career. For her eagerness to put others first. Her abil uh, capability to put up with me. Uh, I love her for her ed dedication to family. Her smile, her laugh, her passion, especially with Duke basketball. Hmm. I love her for her beauty inside and out. For her patience. For just being my best friend. I just love her. And that's very and, sweet. Uh, so that's a that's wonderful awesome. thing. Thank you, yes, it is. Uh, DL. That was wonderful. And here's Paige Eller. She says, Dear love of my life, how you light up with laughter makes me fall in love with you a million times after. Your kindness, your patience, your slowness to speak brings peace to our home, even during the busy work week. I love gazing into your eyes every time you make me swoon. Our love is just as strong, if not more, than at first on our honeymoon. You are the one for me, my dear, and to you forever I will adhere. With my whole heart, I love you, Stuart. You are the one for me. As we walk together through these blissful years, together I always want to be. For God brought us together, and of that I am sure our love is enduring, ever-growing, and pure. Now, that's quite a poem. Yes, Paige. it is. Thank you so much. And Stuart, <laughs> sounds like you're a lucky man there. And uh, so that was good. We enjoyed that one. Heidi McLaughlin, our friend, said, Hello, Youngs. Since <laughs> I missed out last year and wasn't able to submit my poem in time, and you're all doing something similar this year, I just thought I would join in. And she said, I believe you wanted something explaining why we love our spouses so much. A few years ago, I wrote the post below and put it on Facebook. Even though it's a poem, I think it also expresses why I love my Brian. I'm really appreciating. Uh, I really, really appreciating our differences. I truly feel has helped both Brian and me grow closer together. So she says, "Enjoy," and <laughs> she put, "P.S. Thanks for sharing practical ways to live biblically." And uh, you're welcome for that, Heidi. But uh, here's the poem: Happy Valentine's Day to the one guy I know who is the complete opposite of me, but loves me even so. I'm always cold. He's always hot. I like to sleep. He does not. <laughs> he likes to display his stuff all over the place, while I like to put things away and have clear space. He fancies video games. I crave soaks in the tub. He is disgusted by feet, and I want mine rubbed. Hmm. Woodworking is his hobby, and I like to go on walks. He doesn't like to exercise, but I listen to him talk. I enjoy Mexican food. He does not. If it's for dinner, he eats it and spends the night on the pot. <laughs> A so, little TMI. There you go. <laughs> There you go. But awesome. It did rhyme. <laughs> yes. He could care less for the music I sing, but he whistles uh, it to it so loud it'll make your ears ring. Even though we are opposite, we still get along. Just because we are different doesn't mean we are wrong. He loves me and I love him. Although we are not alike, I think that's a win. Happy Valentine's Aww. Day, Brian McLaughlin. That was very good, Heidi. Yes, it is. And here's Lindsay Reisinger in Uganda, if I understand this correctly. They serve yes. with our friends, friends Phil and Christine Prettyman in Uganda. And uh, mm -hmm. she said, we've never met personally, but I feel like yeah, I know you. You guys are a real blessing, and we appreciate the podcast. Why my husband is the best. She says, my husband is the best because he was made just for me. God planned this union long before either of us existed. That thought is so amazing to me. He was designed with unique gifts and talents to fit together with my own set of the same. He's the best simply because he's mine, and that's a gift from God. I'm so thankful I get to wake up as his wife every day. The longer we're married, the more I fall in love with him. As we grow together, I see more and more the hand of God's goodness. That's great. Yes, that And here's sweet. Emily Luchak. I think mm -hmm. I said that right. She said, That's I just right. uh, would like to share a few qualities about the one I love. I've made it rather simple and limited it to three. He's always provided for me, met my every need, and even spoiled me with an occasional let's go out to eat. That's always good. She said the second <laughs> one is um, 
is beating this one because when he swung at Top Golf and missed the tee. Yes. Uh, I laugh so hard because he does everything with such tenacity. <laughs> and she said, lastly, I'll confess, makes me always smile the way he pre- uh, perseveres through difficulties and takes on challenges I would never try. Makes me love him more every day. So thankful I get to be by his side. That was very and, uh, sweet, so Emily. Emily. Thank mm-hmm. you for that. Submitting about Gary. Here's Ruth All. Uh-huh. And she writes about her husband, Ryan. And she says, well, the reason he's the best is God handpicked him for her. The end. <laughs> and, and then she said, no, here's, here's an acrostic. Yes. He's real. That's yes. good. He's young at heart. Ryan is, is what she's going for here. He's real. He's young at heart. And uh, she talks about, he, you know, he, he, she, he wrestles with the kids, jokes with the kids at church. He does summer stall, salts, he handstands, mm. he even takes pictures with nylons over his head. There yeah, that was an interesting. Yeah, there you go, Ryan. Yeah. Send us one know. of those photos. Yeah, we want to, we want to see that. We'll post one. it. <laughs> Uh, he's uh, a a is analytical. Uh, mm-hmm. He he analyzes situation and thinks things through with prayer and in. He's needed. Mm. What makes my husband the best is he is needed. He is sincerely needed. I hope he never forgets how much he's needed in our children's life, and in my life. Mm. And she said uh, it's not a concise list, but he's the best of the best. It is a concise and, uh, list. That's what she's saying. Oh, is that, she did say that. You're right. <laughs> yes. She said, "I love uh-huh. you, Ryan." We got a few more here, and our time will be gone. Why is my husband the best? Oh. Uh, this, this one was one? Uh, very long, but uh, um, Ben is simply the best husband to me. And, um, and, and, and here's what she says about this. Ben is the best husband to me. And uh, this was a poem he wrote a few weeks after Henry was born. Uh, well, you have to give yeah. a little background. Henry was their firstborn child, and he had some very critical uh, physical difficulty. And so her husband, Ben, was with her through the whole thing. And then they had another child. And uh, right after that child was born, her daddy passed away. Mm. So, But shortly after Henry was born, Ben wrote this poem. And she said this is kind of encapsulates why she feels like Ben is the best. Yeah. And she said, they say the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Well, I know better than that because it's the hand that wipes the bottom and holds the bottle. It is the hand that soothes the baby and coaxes out the stubborn burp. It's the hand that performs CPR, administers meds, holds pressure, comforts patients. It's the hand that holds my own, the hand that rubs my neck, scratches my back, and tenderly touches me. I don't know if that hand will rule the world, but I do know that it holds my heart and my love, and that is plenty good enough for me. That's really sweet. That is really sweet. So it's almost as if this was Ashley Holler, right? Ashley and Ben both um, submitted um, things just because she submitted his poem. So yeah. that was good. So uh, thank you for that. That's uh, That was really good. Yes, it was. And then Claudia Chavez uh, wrote a poem entitled, I Love Him. Yes. And uh, this makes it pretty clear. She loves him. Okay. He's my high school sweetheart, my junior high crush. Reasons why he's the best will all sound like mush. I love him. He works hard every day, goes above and beyond, then comes home to play. He and Ty have such a bond. I love him. We sit at the table over dinner every day. He's always the first to ask, babe, how was your day? I love him. Always cleans the kitchen and thanks me for the meal. He shows me that he loves me. He's genuine and real. I love him. I put my daughter down. He takes care of our son and then thanks me for all I did today and that he loves me a ton. I love him. We do it all over again the very next day. He's consistent and patient in every single way. I love him. Many more reasons I could go on and on, but there wouldn't be enough time to tell you about my John. I love him. That was great. I like that one. Abby Christensen. Claudia Chavez. Yeah. And we got just a few more minutes here. This one's really sweet too. Abby Christensen said, Mm -hmm. my husband is the best because my honey bunches is kind, not just to everyone he meets, but he's especially kind to me. My love Mm -hmm. is gracious, not just to people with whom he works, but he's gracious to me. My best friend is patient, not just to the, how do you say that? The Ghanaians. Ghanaians to Uh whom he's telling the truth of the gospel. (laughs) He's especially patient with me. My partner in crime is good, not just to the students in his boys' Sunday school class. He is especially good to me. Mm. My soulmate is fun, not just to the children in his junior church, but especially to me, and not just on date date nights, but throughout the day in his fun-loving teasing of me. Micah Christensen, I love and respect you so much. Your adoring fan, Abby. (laughs) And uh, that was Uh, good. I love the way she signed it. You're adoring fans. Yeah. And she said so much more I can add, but it's just supposed to be a paragraph. (laughs) And let's grab these last few ones and announce the winner. This is from Lauren. 
um, in Albany, Oregon. And she says, Mike's the best. A man who works hard is difficult to come by. So thankful that God saw fit to stick me with this guy. Works an average of 50 plus hours a week. Add ministry in school equals a wonderful geek. So grateful that we've got God on our jacket and a bucket load of God's grace in our pocket. When my love for him ha- has grown over the years, when I stop to count our blessing, it brings within my eyes tears. These memories bring a smile to my face, reminding me that I have the best, and it's so much more than what's below the surface. God, that's great, Lauren. Thank you yes, for that. Yes, and, and she's the one that sent us the little yes, comic strip. And we enjoyed your comic strip very much. Well Absolutely. done. Yes. And then here's Ryan Hawley about Josh. Mm-hmm. And uh, she talks about how she dated Josh. Uh, and she also says she did not, her parents did not follow our, our teaching on dating. <laughs> because they were teenagers they were when teenagers, they started dating. But yes. she talks about how thankful she was. He's reserved but energetic. He's witty and wise. She watched him grow from a teenage boy, killing it on the basketball court, to the strong man coaching teen boys, including their son. On mm-hmm. the basketball court. Yes. Uh, he went from the teenage boy getting educated at a Christian school to surrendering to be the leader uh, at a Christian school, surrendering mm-hmm. to God. And they've gone from being teenagers together now to raising teenagers together. Yes. <laughs> and uh, she just goes on and talks about she loves the blessings that come from their life together, having a family of their own, doing ministry, becoming best friends. He protects me, cares for me, leads our home so well. He's pulled in many directions, but puts me and the kids first. He's an excellent example of our Heavenly Father to our children. And she tells the girls they need to marry a man just like Daddy one day and don't ever settle for less. His wisdom amazes me. His embrace comforts me. His vacation planning skills are out of this world. He makes me (laughs) proud to be his wife. And then she closes it by saying that she's very thankful because he's the one that led her to Christ. That is wonderful. And uh, that was great. Yes. And then we had one more. Paul Douglas uh, wrote us a very long story about his battle Mm. with COVID and how his wonderful wife, Tamara, prayed and kept the house going and even as he has had some pretty serious physical struggles since his covid battle yes she has been there and he's better he's doing well you know he can't walk you know as much uh, as far right, he's and, still on oxygen but he mm-hmm. says his spouse is the best because she loves jesus with all her heart her mind and her soul uh, she walks the walk and talks the talk she's a one percenter of christians he says She's a devoted helpmeet, takes care of him. She's a wonderful faith teaching mother, and he says she is my best friend. Aww, and uh, Paul sounds it. like you have a, a wonderful wife, and uh, we're glad you're doing better. So we we get announced these, and we're out of time. We're over time. Yeah, it's our so, longest oh, podcast. Goodness. Oh, dear. Then we need to get going here. So we, so we don't have an order. Thank you for all of your entries. They were all wonderful. And really, I will tell you, it was hard to choose. It, it was. was. And these mm-hmm. are not one, two, three, four, five. We just chose these. Yes. And so Tom Keller, we chose Mm -hmm. as a winner. Yes. Mary Jane Muller, we chose as a winner. Mm -hmm. Ruth Ull, we chose as a runner, a winner. (laughs) Abby Christensen. Yes. And Ryan Hawley. Yes. And then we had our bonus. And we do have our bonus. We just had to say, Bethany. Yes. You made our day. (laughs) Way to go, Bethany Young. Our Bethany Young. (laughs) Yes. And so if each of you will reach out to us, send us a message with... Yes, um, your favorite coffee place to go on a date with your spouse. And And we uh, will do our best to get you a gift card. Or if you choose a local place, we can just get you some money in the mail. We'll we'll try to make that happen as well. Yep. So reach out to us, each of you. And thank you. Thank you so much for writing. Yes, thank you. And thank you for giving us extra time today on the special edition (laughs) of the keeping it young podcast valentine's day 2022 have a wonderful valentine's day we'll see you next week the keeping it young podcast is a bax 5 media production